the Director of Equality New Mexico, and I'm going to give you a brief overview of our 30-month evolution of our Board of Directors. This is where we started. Four members, three of them male, all white, all cisgender, all high income, and in a state where more than 60% of New Mexicans are people of color. Now, this is not to disparage the work that these folks did to help turn our organization around, but obviously we had a lot of changes we need to make. First thing we started with was making commitments in the board. Number one, we understood that our work should and must serve the communities reflected on our board. We weren't just going to pick people out of the audience and say, come be on our board, but we're not going to do any work for your community. We will build a board reflective of LGBTQ New Mexicans and those most impacted. So centering our board development around those most impacted in our community, not just picking the people who have the most money to give. We will exist in the discomfort. What that means is we will exist in the discomfort of not having a full board. We didn't have a full board. We had very few members for a long time because we said we're not just going to arbitrarily fill board positions. We will submit, suspend and amend bylaws as needed. Institutional tools should not prevent you from doing what you need to do in terms of building a strong board. And we shifted from a recruitment model to an attraction model. So we started showing up. All of these are pictures here in how we communicated our vision for our work. You see this down here. This was a part of our legislative agenda. We are pro-immigrant. We are pro-worker. We are pro-wounds. We came out strong around trans and queer liberation. We've come strong out on Black Lives Matter. We have marched in all of the Cesar Chavez Day marches, which is huge in New Mexico. We started LGBT immigrant advocacy work, and we've been down at the border doing Know Your Rights work for immigrants as well. Other ways we've started showing up is showing up too. We took a strong stance on voter IDs and made sure we were talking about who it actually impacted the most. Not just trans people, but people of color, low-income people, seniors. We started working on intersectional issues. We're more than our LGBTQ identities. We joined POC-led coalitions, Revitalize Not Militarize, Southern Borders Community Coalition. We were the first equality organization to join that coalition. Strong Families New Mexico, Respect ABQ Women and the Coalition for Choice, and ABQ Forward, which is about helping to get the most dangerous police force in the country to stop murdering us. So we partnered and shared grant dollars with POC and Translate organizations. We've probably given out almost half of our grant dollars that we've acquired in two and a half years. And I'm proud to say that in conjunction with that, we have almost tripled our annual budget in spite of that. And we engaged the board, we engaged our board in intensive learning. And so we did anti-bias, anti-oppression, anti-racism work. And here are some of the things that the board has told us about how they've evolved as members. I always thought that because I'm gay, I'm more, I am oppressed. But now I'm more aware of my cisgender white male privilege. Simple stuff. I know that intent does not equal impact. I've never thought of a focus on productivity as being potentially ableist. I know that now. There was a huge evolution in our board when they started talking about these things. And so basically we did everything we could do to do things differently because we had a reputation that didn't work for us. And where did we land? There's my board. That is my board of directors today, 30 months. We have 16 members, 50% of our board are people of color, 30% of our board identify as trans, gender non-conforming. We do have two folks who identify as uh, trans people of color. 70% of our board is now female identified, whereas when we started it was 75% white male. And the board member gift range is anywhere from 10 bucks a month up to $5,000 a year because we wanted to um, definitely get different perspectives that way. Now, we still have challenges. 10% of our population is Native American and we need geographic diversity. But I'd say that we came a pretty long way in 30 months. So, thank you very much.